The first trailer for Julia Roberts' new TV show, Gaslit, has just been released. The narrative revolves around Roberts' character as Martha Mitchell, who was an Arkansas star and one of America's most influential women at the time. She was the first to inform the media about Nixon's dirty tricks during his re-election drive in 1972, which led to the Watergate scandal that eventually led to Nixon's resignation. Today, we'll be talking about all the juicy details that surrounded the scandal, so stay tuned. So, what does the trailer show. The teaser features Julia Roberts as Martha Mitchell, who's seen sporting a bouffant hairstyle and is constantly referred to as being particularly opinionated as she's being interviewed in the trailer. Sean Penn also features as John N. Mitchell, who's disguised as an old version of his slimeball lawyer character from Carlito's Way, with nearly unsettling thick makeup. The trailer makes extensive use of Roberts' natural movie star image and screen presence to communicate Martha Mitchell's appeal and why she was such a prominent figure in the Washington Washington, D.C. social scene at the time. The trailer then shifts to a darker tone, with Martha Mitchell seeing creatures emerge from the shadows and stern-looking physicians telling her that women her age are prone to delusional episodes. This is a story depicting a non-fictional political ploy to discredit an outspoken lady, as the title suggests. Let's take a look into the real story behind Gaslit. Julia Roberts' character was abducted in real life by security guards working for President Nixon's re-election campaign in 1970. She was drugged and assaulted for 24 hours in a hotel room. Nixon Associates claimed she had a history of alcoholism after her release. Following the kidnapping, conservatives attacked Martha Mitchell as a deranged lunatic, and it was only years later that Nixon's re-election campaign security director revealed that they were behind the tragic act. Medical staff connecting delusional insanity to patients' true experiences is now referred to as the Martha Mitchell effect by psychologists. Gaslit will undoubtedly be a chilling incident insight into the culture in which such maltreatment may occur. Of course, it's not much different from the one we have now. Stephen King, the security officer who kidnapped Martha Mitchell, was later chosen by the Trump administration as U.S. ambassador to the Czech Republic and has not disputed his role in the event. Gaslit is based on a season of Leon Nafok's podcast, Slow Burn, and is one of a rising number of episodes adapted from the format. Julia Roberts has already had a lot of luck with the current design, having appeared in the first season of Homecoming, which was also turned turned into a podcast. With a Rotten Tomatoes score of 98%, the show was universally praised. Julia Roberts will also feature alongside George Clooney in an upcoming romantic comedy, so we can all enjoy a change of pace after we're done finding out about Nixon's shortcomings. What was Watergate? Five burglars were caught at the Democratic National Committee's offices at the Watergate Hotel, almost one mile from the White House, at around 2.30 a.m. on June 17, 1972. The break-in, which occurred five months months before the presidential election in the United States, triggered a chain of events that altered the country's history. The forced intrusion the previous month, where the same people seized copies of top-secret papers and wiretapped the phones, was a botched follow-up, to say the least. They decided to return to finish the job when the wiretaps failed, and an FBI inquiry discovered that all five had ties to the White House, including Charles Colson, President Nixon's special counsel, and that they were present at the meeting to re-elect the president, dubbed creep. Nixon stated that nobody in the White House was engaged in the controversy in order to remove himself from it, but he was participating in a big cover-up behind the scenes. His campaign paid the intruders hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase their quiet. Furthermore, in an unacceptable violation of presidential power, the CIA was ordered to obstruct the FBI's investigation into the burglary's financing source. When did cracks start to appear in the cover-up? Despite Nixon's electoral victory in November 1972, the contract controversy continued to grow. By January of the following year, seven individuals known as the Watergate Seven had gone on trial for their roles in the scandal, with five of them pleading guilty as well as the other two veteran Nixon officials, G. Gordon Liddy and James W. McCord, being convicted of conspiracy, burglary, and wiretapping. Five of the accused were allegedly coerced into confessing during their trial, according to a letter sent by McCord shortly after. Others began to break under the pressure as well, and the president's counsel, John Dean, was brushed aside in April 1973 after initially attempting to protect the presidency. Dean later gave testimony against the president's atrocities, informing a grand jury that he believed communication inside the Oval Office may have been taped. In the end, Nixon refused to submit the tapes to Watergate prosecutors, resulting in a tug of war. He did, however, reveal the recordings of the Watergate cover-up in August 1974 amidst motions to impeach him, and on August 8th, he submitted his resignation, becoming the only 
only U.S. president to do so. Was Nixon behind the whole controversy? Because a taped discussion between Nixon and his chief of staff shows Nixon asking, that was the guy who did? It's improbable that Nixon ordered the break-in. On the other hand, his participation in concealing his administration's complicity, on the other hand, is undeniable. Nixon, on the other hand, was able to persuade the people of his innocence at the time, and he won the election with 60.7% of the vote. The Washington Post, in particular, played an important role in keeping the issue in public view. Its writers, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, broke the much more important articles about the controversy, and their research is credited with bringing President Clinton down. Their narrative was told in the 1974 novel All the President's Men, which was eventually adapted into a film. A covert FBI informant is credited with guiding Woodward and Bernstein down the proper path, supposedly advising them to follow the money. The informant remained a mystery until 2005, when he was identified as Mark Felt, FBI number two. Nixon's chief of staff and attorney general were among the 60-plus people indicted, with 48 being found guilty. As a result, Nixon maintained his innocence, claiming in 1977 that if the president does it, it's not a crime. And as a result, he was finally exonerated by President Ford, avoiding impeachment and punishment. Now, in other show news, Daredevil Season 4 will be different on Disney+. Daredevil, along with other Marvel shows that are on Netflix, will exit the platform on March 1st, 2022. While no official declaration on their future has been made, those Marvel titles are likely to accompany the MCU, as well as many other Marvel legacy programs on Disney Plus and Hulu, such as Agent Carter. As soon as the news of the relocation became known, the debate regarding Daredevil earning a fourth season revived. Since it was discontinued in November 2018, fans have been demanding for a revival of Daredevil, which was the most famous show in Netflix's Marvel roster. The return of Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock in Spider-Man No Way Home, along with Vincent Giudoforno's character, Wilson Fisk, is Hawkeye, fueled fan anticipation for a fourth season. The prospects of a fourth season today, since Daredevil is officially in Marvel's control, are better than they've ever been. Next, Daredevil Season 4 would be shorter than Netflix's seasons. Every season of Daredevil, like every other Netflix program apart from The Defenders, has 13 hour-long episodes. While this continued to work for Daredevil, it dragged out the narratives of others, just like Iron Fist. The remainder of Marvel Studios' live-action series, on the other hand, has been only six episodes long, and the next Moon Knight will follow suit. If a fourth season of Daredevil is ever made, it would most likely follow the six-episode format rather than the original 13. This is due to the fact that Netflix and Disney Plus have separate release structures. While Netflix used to broadcast complete seasons of Marvel series on the same day, Disney Plus chose to release episodes week after week, allowing the show to maintain its firm grip on the limelight and generate greater interest with each episode. If Disney decides to bring Daredevil back, Season 4 will most likely be reduced to six episodes. Would reviving Daredevil for Season 4 be the best decision? Daredevil's cult following nearly ensures him a standalone MCU project in the future, even if he does appear in a few projects here and there. Rather than a resurrection, Marvel Studios might choose to remake the series with the same cast. Fans of the Netflix series would be outraged, especially because Daredevil's actions do not contradict any of the genuine MCU canon. Another idea is for Daredevil to star in his own Marvel Cinematic Universe film. While many feel Daredevil is better suited for the small screen, Marvel Studios has previously proven that a two-hour blockbuster can fit a lot of stories and characters. This would increase the character's visibility and present him to a wider audience. Even with these alternatives on the table, the wisest course of action for Marvel Studios would still be a Daredevil reboot. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. If you enjoyed our content, please smash the like button, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.